All right, here we go. Here we go. Whoops. Here we go. Getting a little set up here. We're at the furnace. Little space heater. And let's straighten this out. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, let's get this party started. All right, welcome to HB RV Lifestyle. We are live. Pardon me. A couple of announcements I want to make before people start coming in. If you're watching this afterward, um, I got approached by uh, someone who designs clothing, specifically t-shirts and hats. Thank you, Larry. And um, I'm on the fence whether to join the apparel side of the YouTube business. Um, so, you know, whether you're watching live, and I'll, I'll sprinkle it in between this entire session, but would that interest you guys if I designed a t-shirt that was specifically either for the main channel or the podcast or hats um let me know uh send it in the comments section if you're listening to this on spotify apple uh, music iHeartRadio, send me an email to levingston rv services at gmail.com that's l-e-v-i-n-g-s-t-o-n rv services at gmail.com um, I got so many emails, uh, this week. It was a record. Um, cool, Larry. Thank you for letting me know. Um, it was an absolute, like, it was a good kind of insanity. <laughs> I mean, I was like, I'm gonna need a beer before I do this. In fact, I drank a Modelo before I began this live stream so let me get to the emails and i kind of lumped and grouped some of the ones that had common questions uh there was some really really good stuff um specifically about rv financing that i found very interesting okay that's email number one let me go to the second email and let's start Okay, first question. You mentioned in your finance video that not everybody can qualify for a 20-year loan. It depends on how much we are taking a loan out for, down payment, and credit. The question is, is that set in stone or is there exceptions to the 20-year rule? The reason why I ask is I found a travel trailer I really want to buy, and I can afford it on a 20-year loan, but I cannot afford it on a 12- or 15-year loan. But every dealership I go to and bank and credit union I talk to privately give me either 10-year or 15-year loan terms. Okay. I haven't been asked this in a long time. Um... So, <laughs> most credit unions do not do 20-year loans. Let's start with that. I'm going to say out of all the credit unions I've worked with over the last 10 years, there's three. Okay? Two of them are a balloon payment after 10 years. So, for example, America's First, which is mainly a West Coast credit union, will do a 20-year term initially, but when you reach year 10, there's balloon payments. The only true credit union that does a 20-year term is called um, Alliant Credit Union out of Chicago. Now, you there's a lot of things involved with that. 
First off, the reason why the dollar amount financed matters is because of the way they structure the loan for insurance purposes and um, leverage purposes. So when they go to insure a loan, especially when it's good credit loan, let's say you're a 740, 750, you have good credit, the way they insure the loan and can get more money leveraging that existing lien is if they fit within a payment to income ratio that makes sense for the insurance company. So remember that they don't just give out a loan on these things. They're insured. Okay. And when they buy insurance on these time type of recreational loans, it's more or less because they know there's going to be a repossession rate. So the reason why they save it for a $50,000 or $45,000 or more loan and the reason why they do it strictly through mostly the banks that are at the dealership is for the specific purposes of the risk a 20-year term tends to give. When you take a twenty-five dollars or $30,000 loan, now let me backtrack for a second. State Farm. State Farm used to do 20-year loans as long as you were financing $15,000. They did a stupid interest rate, but they still did it. They stopped doing it because they started realizing the repossession rate on a 20-year term was significantly higher than if they did a 10- or 15-year term. So hopefully that makes sense for you. So even though you found the right travel trailer, you need to do one of two things. Either you need to downsize what you're looking for or you need to find one that's used because unfortunately you're not going to be able to manipulate the system where you can get a thirty or $40,000 trailer and get a 20-year term, okay? So hopefully that helps you out, okay? Great question, by the way. I got asked that about two years ago. And uh, that was a good one. You have talked a lot on your podcast and somewhat on your main channel about Grand Design fifth wheel frame problems and construction problems. If you were in our shoes, would you choose a Brinkley or a Grand Design? Obviously, you have said that you're not sure about Brinkley because you haven't quite gotten your hands on one yet. But would you choose between the unit you don't know or the unit you do? Well, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Oh, nose itch. Okay. I can't really answer this question directly. As much as I want to answer this question directly, I can't. Because, first off... I would stay away from Grand Design fifth wheels in general right now, even used ones, because we just don't know the extent of the problem with the construction issues. In fact, I got emailed 49 emails in the last three days of people that have had frame flex, construction, electrical issues, all kind of really major problems with their Grand Design fifth wheel. Um... I don't know about Brinkley yet. I've gotten a lot of people that have invited me to come out and and uh, look at their Brinkley. i got to kind of figure out how to make that work. So I'm just not sure. And um, the problem is, is like Miles RV. If you guys have heard of Miles, Miles is a sunshine and rainbows guy. Everything is perfect and sunshine and rainbows, okay? Kind of how he's been, even as an independent, even though he's not part of a corporation, he has a big smile on his face, gives all this positive energy and vibe about all kinds of stuff, and he rarely has the transparency of someone that is willing to critique something. That doesn't bother me, but it also makes me like not have enough information. Josh the RV nerd. All sunshine and rainbows when it comes to Brinkley. So I don't have, I haven't touched and felt it enough to give you guys valid, 
actual information of my actual review of one yet. I'm working on getting in front of a Brinkley so I could do it. But I'm going to tell you something very interesting. And it doesn't red flag me. I want to start with that. It doesn't send me red flags or stick hair on the back of my neck like Grand Design does right now. But dealerships want me nowhere near their lot when it comes to filming a Brinkley. I've contacted friends of mine that I know that carry Brinkley on their lot. And they told me, we love you, but there's no damn way in hell we're going to have you come to our lot and film one. We don't want to get in trouble with Brinkley and risk our, our product line. So there's probably something in the contract that Brinkley does in the dealer agreement that basically controls the content that can be released by the dealer. So, you know, that's why I said like the Miles situation, Matt's RV reviews, Josh the RV nerd, I can't get a gauge yet, but I promise I will. If I were to suggest a product, I would go Cedar Creek, Flagstaff Rockwood, um, Keystone Cougar, uh, Alliance, Montana. Um, I'm still on the fence all the time about Jayco North Point. There are years where I'm like, yeah, it's an okay product. And there's years where I'm like, Jesus, crime is a piece of crap. <laughs> so it's year to year with them. I think a lot of it has to do with production ever since Thor bought Jayco. Still a decent product, not a bad product, but it's just like sometimes I'm like, yay, and sometimes like, ugh, but say that, say la vie. But I promise I will get you an answer. Can you share any insight on roadside programs? Good Sam versus AAA. Heard good things and bad things about both. Thanks for keeping things straight for a travel trailer, by the way. Um, me personally, I'm not a good Sam fan. I never have been, mostly. And again, I'm not sure about the roadside, uh, roadside assistance program. I've always been a AAA guy. The problem with both programs and any roadside assist assistance program in general, uh, H2 Fowler 2012, is roadside assistance is really based on the availability of someone in the area where you break down that has the equipment to tow your travel trailer, to tow your truck. Uh, if it's a motor home, to put your big motor home on a flatbed. And then they have to be a part of that program and be able to do it at the price that AAA or Good Sam have set to do those type of things. Um, I'm not a fan of Good Sam only because I think the extended warranty program part of Good Sam has really screwed me in the past as far as being a service manager and a service writer. So I have a bias against Good Sam. Um, so, you know, you got to take me with a grain of salt with that because I am biased with it, okay? Mostly because I've been screwed over too many times. Um, you know, National RV Product Portfolio... They might have bad reviews online, but they've always paid out uh, the warranty claims on a timely basis. Uh, Western RV uh, Services, which is another one of those extended warranty companies, again, one that gets really crappy reviews online, yet from a service point of view and a service writer and service manager point of view, they've always paid well, paid on time, and paid what I asked. So... How about Alliance Valor Toy Hauler All Access Trim? I love Alliance. Guys, um, I'll give you a story, quick story about Alliance, okay? First of all, the guy that runs Alliance, his name is Coley Brady. Coley, I've tried to call him. He's not picking up my phone calls. I want to get him on my podcast because Coley was responsible for how Heartland, okay, um, Heartland, Bighorn, Landmark, Sundance, and Big Country from 2011 to 2016 was the best built fifth wheel in the industry, Cyclone and Road Warrior. And Coley Brady was a big reason why, because of the way he believes something should be built, something should be manufactured, and what should be behind it. Now, does that mean they don't have bad apples? 
of course, every manufacturer has bad apples, okay? There's not one manufacturer that builds everything perfect. But Alliance is a great product. I don't think you can go right. If I, I wish I had Alliance on my lot here in Nevada. I really do. AAA will tow your trailer if equipped and not leave it by the roadside with RV out on. Okay, perfect, Theo. See, that's good information right there for, for uh, H2O Fowler. With all its potluck with the area you're in. There you go. <laughs> exactly. It's a potluck. <laughs> exactly. Got to get a little lucky. Okay, next question that was emailed to me. <clears throat> I'm going to have to start doing this by super chat. <laughs> Because there's just so many. Good Lord. This is a good thing. I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm actually excited about all these questions. Um, you mentioned that prices will probably go up sometime during the summer. I've actually noticed that some of the dealerships have started to raise their prices already. Can you explain why that's going on now and not towards the summer? Uh, also, you mentioned that interest rates went down. We have noticed that, but we are also still being quoted over 10% interest by dealerships across the East Coast when we ask for a quote. Can you explain why that happens and why they continue to say that 10% interest is the baseline rate? Okay. Obviously, you're a mortgage person or you work in banking because the way that was verbiaged, I could tell you probably work for a bank. First off, I want to start with this. Um, so when I quote an interest rate without seeing credit, I quote high. Even myself, I quote high interest rates when I quote someone when I haven't seen their credit. Here's the reason why I do that. This comes from experience, okay? Okay. My experience has been is people have shown me their credit on their phone and when I run their credit, it's completely different, okay? What we see on our phone is one type of scoring, which is usually pretty loose. It's not really what um, banks and lending institutions use necessarily, okay? There's also different credit score ratings for credit cards, boats, RVs. I think the last time I looked, there's 36 different uh, Experian scores. Okay. So I've seen it where a customer will show me on their phone they're 730 or 740 FICO, and I pull them and they're 770 or 775. I've also seen, and this recently happened a couple of days ago, I saw a person that told me they showed me their 814 score on Credit Karma. I ran them, they were 696. So I quote high. And the reason why a dealership in general should quote high, okay, on initial without seeing credit, without working the deal, with no commitment, just a quote. The reason why you should do that as a dealership is because you haven't seen what it is. So if I'm quoting 10% as an example, 9.99, and the credit union or bank I use comes back at 899, then it lowers your payment and you're happy. If the bank comes back at 10 and a half or 1074 or the credit union comes back at 1099 or 11 and a quarter, the difference in payment is not dramatic. Well, if I send you a quote at 7.99 and I get a bank and, a, and four credit unions that come back at 1099, you're going to get out like the roadrunner. So I'd rather quote high and come in the final number lower than quote low and the number come in high. I'm not a game player. Now, I can't speak for other dealerships. I'm just speaking from my own personal experience and how I deal with things, okay? So when somebody's quoting you 10% right now, it's not necessarily because they don't know rates went down. It's because you haven't given them the commitment to work the deal properly with their lending institutions. You basically have asked for a general quote, right? Now, when you're ready to sit down and actually grind it out and do, and what I mean by grind it out is grind out a credit app, grind out all your paperwork, sit down and wait for a bank to come back with an approval, then you're going to get quoted high. Anybody who quotes you anything less than that, it's called a teaser. 
Just like with mortgage institutions, there's a bunch of stuff on TikTok right now. Oh, interest rates at six and a quarter, interest rates at 599. That's a teaser to throw out to you and hook you into starting a process with them. Okay. Or it's a buy down rate. Maybe they got $40,000 to play with from the seller of the house to buy down the interest rate to make it more attractive to you. Okay. So, you know, you, you have to look at things differently. I had a guy who told me he was quoted 6%. That's a buy down rate. That means the dealership is taking their profit that they have built into the motorhome or travel trailer fifth wheel and buying down the interest rate. 6% does not exist in the RV industry. It exists maybe in a personal loan, maybe on a short-term 32 to 36-month personal loan. That's a possibility. I know Logic's Federal Credit Union in California has five and a quarter on a 24-month personal loan, okay? But not on an RV loan. Their RV loans start at eight and a half and go up to eight nine nine for solid credit, okay? So hopefully that helped you out a little bit. All right, let's look at the request line. The 31A10 is the only one that comes close to 320G momentum. Downside, downside is they don't have the washer dryer hookup. Chaz, I'd look into that. I think they do have the possibility. Maybe call the factory and see if they can put it in for you on a factory order. Would you put Forest River fifth wheels on your lot? I do. I have I have Forest River fifth wheels on my lot. I carry Flagstaff. I carry Flagstaff and Riverstone. I would love to have Cedar Creek on my lot brand new, but they're not available. But I'd love to have your Cedar Creek. If you live in the area, man, you can bring your Cedar Creek and consign it here. I'd love to have a consignment. I saw the interest rate can be affected by the amount of money you put down. Have you seen this also? Absolutely, Theo. If you actually go to all my channel, my entire finance catalog, if you go to my pay playlist of all my finance videos, the number one thing that affects the interest rate is the amount financed. The second is the percentage of money you're putting down. The third is your credit score or credit history. It's okay, Ice Queen Empress. You're fine. You're not that late. We're only 22 minutes in. I've only gone through three questions so far. I've taken a couple questions from the request line here. And uh, here we go on question number four. Okay. Wrong email. We're going to go to the other email. There we go. Okay. Um... Hey, Honey Badger, we just put a deposit on an order on a Momentum 395, and now we're scared to death. We gave the dealership $10,000, and they told us that they get to have, keep our deposit if we back out. $10,000 is a lot of money to walk away from, and we're having a tough time uh, walking away from our deposit on this order. The reason why they said there's no return on the deposit is because of the fact we're asking for full body paint and a few other items for the factory to install that they don't normally order on their stock units. I've talked to several local attorneys to ask them if that is true that our state does non-refundable deposits and it comes out to be true. If you were in our shoes, what would you do at this point? The $10,000 was a big chunk of our down payment. Um, I have to think about this for a second. I'm going to swig my adult beverage for a second. Give me a second. Here's my advice to you. This is the only thing I can think of. Eat the 10 grand. I know that's probably not what you want to hear. But the worst thing that you can possibly do, and this is with anything. This isn't just towards momentum. This is towards anything. Okay? My feeling is, is if you're not comfortable going down the road in what you're buying because of everything you've 
read, everything you've understood. It's better to walk away from $10,000 than to be stressed and worried and not be able to enjoy yourself and take it as a lesson learned, okay? That's pretty harsh, I know. It's not meant to be harsh, but it's the only thing I could think of. Like if, if you were in California and some of these other states, they can't hold your deposit. So I don't know what state you're in. Um, maybe, maybe negotiate with the dealership and tell them, look, why don't you refund it to me when you sell it? See if they'll do something like that. Um, I've had one experience already where I had a customer actually reach out to me. Sorry, my nose is itching. Um, a customer reached out to me through Messenger, Facebook Messenger, and said they shared one of my podcast episodes with the Grand Design reps in Salt Lake City in their Salt Lake City show. And uh, they didn't want to talk about it. I'm like, okay, I'll take that kind of with a grain of salt because I don't know, I wasn't there, so I wasn't there to see their reactions. But it's something getting out there and it's worrying people. And I'm not here to slam and worry people. I'm just here to give information. But if you're not comfortable with what has happened and what's transpired, walk away. You, I'd rather have you walk away from $10,000 than have something bad happen. Uh, or, or have you so stressed out that you're not enjoying yourself. So that's my advice. Hello, Karen F. If they pay with a credit card, they may help, it may, they may help reverse it. Some people pay that way to get cash back or points. There you go. There's something else. Absolutely, Theo. That's another way. If you pay with credit card, freaking especially if it's America Express, yank that crap back. Okay. Okay. Next email. And then we're going to go to comments because I can't get through all these. Holy cow. Ooh, there we go. Uh, Honey Badger, we have a Toyota Tundra, brand new one we bought. We were very much excited. We found three half-ton towable fifth wheels that we absolutely fell in love with. And we're trying to decide between the three. And then we got turned on to your video by our next door neighbor about why you would, you personally would never sell a half-ton fifth wheel or half-ton truck a fifth wheel. Now it makes us kind of wonder, should we go back to the drawing board? Can you please elaborate a little about what you said? Because the factory that we talked to, the factory rep we talked to, says that we're perfectly safe in our Tundra. We talked to Toyota. They gave us kind of a scientific answer that I don't quite understand. And when I talk to people in blogs, half the people agree with you and half the people don't and think you're silly. Please elaborate how you came to this conclusion. Okay. So I'm going to go into, I actually read this about two days ago, and I was prepared for this answer, okay? Because for me, it's very, it, it, it's an emotional thing for me, as well as a scientific thing for me, okay? So the average payload capacity of a, <laughs> my sympathies with the Tundra. <laughs> Don't start, Theo. Good Lord. Okay. Uh, back to what I was saying, um, half ton trucks in general have an average payload capacity of 1600 pounds. Okay. Some have a little more, some have it a little less. I've seen some at 1800. I've seen some at 1400, etc. Okay. But let's look at 1500 pounds. That's payload. Okay. So by the time you add yourselves fuel and Let's say miscellaneous stuff. Let's say you have kids with you. Let's say you're putting a cooler. Um, let's say you've got snacks and some, maybe some extra things for when you're driving down the road, okay? 
So let's just say that that in total is three to 400 pounds between people and stuff on the light side. Now your payload capacity, let's use 1,500 pounds, is down to 1,100. Okay, so your cargo capacity and your payload capacity now went from 1,500 to 1,100 pounds. Okay, most pin weights on fifth wheels are minimum between 1,300 and 1,900 pounds on these half ton towable fifth wheels. So when you're driving down the road in a half ton, it will pull it just fine because the weight of the fifth wheels are usually between 6,900 and 9,000 pounds dry. Most of your tow, uh, trucks are going to tow it without a problem. It's stopping it that I am big time worried about. So what happens with half ton trucks is now you've got this big payload on your fifth wheel pushing and chucking against the rear of your truck as you're going downhill. Now, I've seen guys who take a half-ton truck and put better leaf springs, better suspension, airbags. I've seen all kinds of stuff. I've seen guys put bigger brakes and upgrade their one half-ton truck to be more like a three-quarter-ton truck. That doesn't bother me, but a straight half-ton truck should never tow a fifth wheel. Ever. And this half-ton towable crap kind of pisses me off always has okay so it's reality is a tundra as much as guys will make fun of me inside this live stream and probably later on in the aftermath most tundras are really good trucks for pulling toy haulers and travel trailers when they're pull behinds when people used to ask me well what kind of what kind of inexpensive truck would you get if you were going to pull a toy hauler I always just say a Tundra. If you can't afford a three-quarter ton diesel, go with a Tundra, go with a Titan. Yeah, I'll get made fun of for that. I understand. But it's just I've been around a long time. I've been watching people pull stuff for a while. And a lot of guys that own Tundras that go to travel trailers or pull behind small toy haulers, they always tell me it does really good. So to go, go, there's plenty of travel trailer floor plans that are beneficial and good that are small, lightweight, and have good floor plans that you can tow around. You got um, Surveyor by Forest River. You got Keystone Cougar. Um, you've got Jayco Eagle. Um, you've got um, God. I mean, I'm losing track. Uh, you've got Coachman Freedom Express. Uh, you got Coachman Apex. There's a ton of options out for you. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just going to tell you from what I understand and what I've learned, especially the mistake selling a fifth wheel to a half-ton truck years ago, I would never do it again. In fact, I've lost three deals last year because I told guys, I'll deliver the fifth wheel to your house, but I'm not touching your truck. I'm not putting a fifth wheel. I'm not responsible for it. And they walked away from me because, well, they know what I believe. <laughs> I have a one ton. It is barely enough for a large fifth wheel. 330,000 miles. What brakes when? Okay. All the marketing half ton, R on half ton RVs are really for three quarter ton and they lean to folks who don't know better. And that's partially true. Um, it's dangerous for the rest of us on the road. Makes me mad also. I understand that. So, Chaz, I'm going to half them. What it is is the guys who build the half ton towable fifth wheels. They don't pay attention to the science of payload and cargo capacity. They're going off of um, dry weight and GVWR because that's the old way of doing things. They have Most guys haven't caught up to that. I only use a one-two dually for a fifth wheel. That's fine. That's your opinion, F-14 flyer, and that's a good opinion. That's not a bad opinion. I'm okay with guys using three-quarter ton diesel trucks as long as they're 2017 or newer. When they start getting older than 2017, I start really having to break down what their truck really can do. But past 2017, most of them outside of Ram can tow a fifth wheel with no problem. But I, I, I understand the thought about one ton dually. I totally get it. Not something I'm against, okay? Not at all. 
but just I, I'm okay with three quarter ton. Okay. All right, last email one, then we'll get into the comments because I got some questions from comments and direct messages from Facebook and Instagram. Oh, no, I already read that one. Okay, let's get into the comments. And then we'll go into the me Messenger and Instagram. I got some good ones in Messenger, too. Really, really good ones. Okay, here we go. Bop, bop, boop, bop, 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 bam, boom. We need, to, we need to hide this swig of adult beverage for a moment. Excuse me. Ah, celebration. <laughs> I'll tell you why I'm celebrating later. I had a cigar already today. I'm kind of celebrating. I've had a... It's been a good month in a lot of aspects. Okay. Here, here we go. Okay. Um, this came off of the main channel... Uh, how does financing work on an RV loan with an LLC? Um, I had another guy ask, how about financing an RV loan to an LLC for a write-off? Uh, financing available? No. And the answer is no to that, guys. You cannot finance a RV under a RV loan through a corporation, an LLC. They must be all guaranteed personally. Every single loan is a personalized loan with a social security number. Um, now, there's one or two banks that will do it under somebody's name with a TIN number. No, not new baby. I'm too old for that. You guys may think I'm young, but <laughs> I'm too old for that. I'll tell you why I'm celebrating in a little bit. Let me finish this up, okay? Um, now... What I would recommend is something that was recommended to me by actually a tax person through that actually is a subscriber to this channel. He said that if you personally take the loan out as a person with a social and everything else, you then lease the RV to the LLC or to the company and then put the company logo somewhere on the RV, whether it's on the bumper, whether it's on uh, like a magnet on the side, um, whether it's a wrap that you put on or, or some kind of sticker or graphic you put on to the RV. Um, that was the recommendation on how to get a business to write off an RV purchase when you have to take the loan out personally. Okay, So kind of something to keep in mind. I'm not sure about the logistics of that or the legality of that. But that was something that was recommended uh, from a subscriber that says he's a tax accountant. So um, hopefully that's helpful. No, I'm celebrating because today uh, I qualified to have my podcast monetized both on Spotify and YouTube. I get it. Eight-year-old son of 59. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm pushing. I'm going to be 40 this year. Um, I already have, uh, my daughters, my twin daughters turned 13 in April. I'm like, no, <laughs> unless an accident happens, no way, no way, Jose, uh, I'm done. Um, no, the reason why I'm celebrating is because the podcast channel on YouTube and the podcast on Spotify, uh, qualified for monetization. And um, it kind of made me um, very proud because, as I said, as I've said a lot in this, I mean, I never thought, I never thought I'd reach 10,000 subscribers on the main channel, let alone have now three monetized YouTube channels. So um, thank you, Blair. Thank you, H2 Fowler. Um, it was, um, you know, no teenagers. Thank you, Larry. Um, Thank you, Flyer. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, guys. It, it, you know, a lot of it has to do with you guys. You guys watch. You guys are the ones that, um, without you guys watching, uh, I wouldn't be motivated to do this stuff. Um, without you guys, uh, if, if nobody ever watched this stuff, I probably would have stopped a year or two ago. So um, the podcast just, I don't know how or why or what happened, but the podcast... I mean, it took 
off in the last three weeks. The last three weeks, it's been like, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Thanks, Chaz. Thanks, Theo. We have no life. <laughs> you guys are funny. Hey, you'd be surprised. The last live stream got almost 8,000 viewers after we ended the live stream. So, uh, guacamole. There you go. That was crazy. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, what was the next one? Uh, just pay cash for RVs. Jeez. <laughs> okay. That was a good one. Yes, bottom line, they all try to F you. Okay. Very interesting. Where is that question? I know it's a great one. Okay. Okay. Um, why, why does Grand Design, I'm sorry, why does Grand Design feel like they need to keep this a secret? We are having major problems across the board with our reflection. And it just seems like getting a hold of a customer service representative at the actual factory is very hard. Now, I've been given names of several people I can contact directly along with extensions and emails but the contact is very seldom and random. I believe that they are being picky and choosy about who they help out and why they help them out. Do you have an insight to any of this? I don't. I'm trying to gather information. Now it's 13 degrees and snowing, Northeast Ohio. <laughs> Hello from Slovakia. I started watching you every video and now lives. Thank you, Karen. It's stupid to let it crust then to wipe, okay? We love you. Love you guys too. Thank you, Larry. You earned it. Shut up. Okay. Um, looks like the trolls are coming in. Um, so anyway, um, I don't have any insight to how Grand Design communicates. I, I don't I don't have um I have no experience with them on that level. Um what I will say is I've gotten emails from people that have had issues with Jayco North Point. One guy specifically told me that his Jayco North Point had a frame issue uh, back two years ago. And he put it on the Jayco owner's uh, blog, or one of them. And uh, Jayco reached out to him and got his unit fixed within like three months. And the complaint is still still there on the owner's group. At least that's what he said. Um, I've had another person tell me that he had a problem with the Keystone Montana back in 2018 that he still owns, and they warranted uh, their work for three years. He had to take it back to their factory and have it worked on, and he said he had absolutely no issues, and that Keystone um, you know, reached out to him immediately after he sent the complaint through email, and uh, you know they got him fixed up really good. So... Um, Uh, view message. Hold on, let me get rid of this person. Good lord, I hit the Veritas guy. That's ridiculous. God, why are people doing that? Okay. Heavy metal music's badass. Depends on my mood, depends on the day, Curtis. Really does, depends. Depends on my mood. I don't know any bands. I just pay, have Siri pick the music for me or Alexa. Um, hi, hi, HB. Me and my husband are looking at the 2024 Forest River Aurora. We got a quote of thirty-seven thousand to thirty-eight thousand from Blue Compass with a down payment of ten to twenty percent. Is that a good deal? I don't know because I don't know what model number you're looking at. That's the only thing I don't know. I don't know what model you're looking at. So, um, you know, one of the things I would tell you is. Coachman Aurora uh, is the same thing as a Coachman Catalina. It's the same exact trailer. It's just the private label for RVR, RV retailers, which rebranded itself to Blue Compass. I would say this. 
it really depends on the floor plan and depends on the model. I actually sent you a message back, haven't heard back from you, um, but I just need to know the model number and what, and, and, and that kind of gives me a gauge of whether you're getting a good deal or not. Your reviews suck. It sounds like you work for Redwood, more like Red Limp. Well, I can tell you you're probably a grand design apologist, and that's okay. I understand. And, okay, let's go to Messenger, because I got some really good stuff out of Messenger. One second. Bum, 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 bum. Okay. We have been looking at a pleasure way van conversion that is used at a dealership lot. It is a 2006 and they want $40,000 for it. Now, while I find that amount reasonable compared to everything else I've researched, I'm having a tough time finding any of my lenders, my personal bank, Wells Fargo, as well as my credit union, which is called Unify Federal Credit Union. They will not do that age of a motorhome. I really do not want to do a three or four year personal loan. Do you know of anybody that will finance a 2006 uh, B-Van conversion? Um... No. The answer is no. Um, it's just not, it's not in the cards. I'm sorry, it just isn't. Um, okay, let me get rid of Mr. Funkel here. There we go. Mr. Funkel's gone. Okay, um, so the problem is the book value. The actual lending book value of that 06 Pleasure Way will be nowhere near $40,000. Um, you really got to get to creative financing when you're going to buy an older unit. When you're going to buy an older van, first of all, you're not going to convince somebody at a dealership or convince a private party seller to to lower their price dramatically on a B van because right now in this industry, and it's been this way about the last seven or eight years, um, class B motorhomes are the most sought after used motorhome on the market. So Patrick Schultz, welcome. Um, so yeah, there's nobody that's gonna finance a 2006 motorhome like that, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. That was the Jaco guy. I already talked about him. Uh, okay, here's one. I hate Ford. Ford is the devil when it comes to the automobile industry. So why in the sand blue hell does most of the RV manufacturers use Ford to build Class C and Class A motorhomes? And why do they not use a Chevy or a Ram Hemi in any of the Class A motorhomes when it comes to gas? Um, simple answer is, is Ford was more reliable to the RV business. Hey, no problem, Patrick. Thank you, man. Really appreciate it. Oh yeah, don't worry about it. I, I cancel all the idiot messages, as you guys can see. Sounds like you got a lot of Grand Design employees chatting tonight. Yeah, well, it's possible. We'll get into that in a second. Um, Ford was a lot more reliable back in the day. So you had Workhorse. Uh, workhorse was on the Chevy 8.1 with the Allison transmission, and they had a caliper problem, brake caliper problem, and surprisingly, uh, they started having reports of uh, valve problems, or valve or spark plug or something problems. They were having 
major, major issues with the Chevy motor inside Class A motorhomes. Um, so after Workhorse went out of business, all the RV manufacturers just basically went Ford as the really base base thing they do. And then you got Mercedes for the smaller Class C's, Class A's. You got the Ram ProMaster for some of the Class B motorhomes. Freightliner does all of your uh, your diesel uh, pushers along with Cummins. Uh, of course, you got the Roadmaster chassis and things like that. But the baseline of it is Freightliner with a Cummins. Um, and then, you know, very few Class C's, some of, the, some of the smaller Class C motorhomes will come with a Chevy. Um, it's just been more reliable for the RV world. That's what I've been told. That was their explanation to me a while back ago was Ford was more reliable on the commercial side uh, than Chevy was. And after Workhorse went out of business, there's no reason to keep Chevy around. So that's that's basically the answer to you. Um, I would tell you the new V8, so far we haven't seen problems. I haven't heard of any yet from anybody yet. That is concerning. Um, and the V10 worked out fabulous, especially post-2010. Um, they want a real truck. <laughs> it's not the truck. It's the, uh, it's the motor home. I emailed a question about what Chevy Colorado can tow. I think I answered you, Ice Queen, didn't I? I sent you an email. Yeah, you're fine. Your, G your Chevy Colorado can tow the microlights. I told you that. I, I think I sent you the email. The only one you can't tow probably is the um, the 27. The 25 BDS, the 25 FK. I sent you an email back, Ice Queen. I did, because you sent me that like last week. Um, but yeah, you, you can, the Chevy Colorado is fine. Um, I'll re-forward it to you. Hold on, because I know what your email is. Um, now that you remind me, because I remember, I remember that email, because I remember trucks. Um, hold on, let me re-forward it to you. Hold on. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Let's put, um. Okay. Now I can't find anything. But anyway, I'll, I'll find it and re-forward it to you. You're welcome. No, you're fine. You're, you're perfectly fine because the GVWR, because remember you told me it was 7,700 pounds. Hello from Russia. Don't know who I'm going to vote for. Have no clue. Don't really talk about that too much. Um, but yeah, you're, 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 the GVWR of the micro lights is under 7,700 pounds. You got plenty of room. You're fine. You just can't tow the 27. Thank you so much, Ice Queen Empress. Really appreciate you. Hello, Caden Murphy. Can we buy some of the RVs in your videos? Absolutely, you can. Um, I, I'm in Nevada, but there's a lot of um, uh, RV dealerships across the country that carry the stuff that I have in the lot that I film. Uh, Ice Queen Empress, do you have a channel? Okay. Super duty, absolutely. Super duty, super duty, super duty. We're going to swig another thing of Modo Low. Mm. Ah, ice cold beer. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to spend the last seven, eight minutes here, and I want to talk about a couple things. So I dropped at the beginning of the video... Uh, I dropped uh, that I was actually approached, and Larry already answered me. I appro got approached by an apparel company that was willing to make shirts and hats for the channel and the podcast. And he wants to get together. Um, E.g., uh, my, my email is Levingston, L-E-V, as in Victor, I-N-G, S-T-O-N, service rv services so levingston rv services at gmail.com hey tommy thank you puff fish really appreciate you man appreciate the support um he's willing to make honey badger rv t-shirts and hats and i'm on the fence about this thing okay hey random clicker um i'm on the fence on whether i want to do it or not um, part of me is like, do I really want to be a gimmick? 
But then part of me is like, wouldn't that be really badass to have people walk around RV shows with the Honey Badger shirt on? I mean, I think that would be really cool. Um, so let me know if you guys would do it. If you guys would buy apparel that had to do with Honey Badger RV or HB RV, uh, let me know. You know, that, that would help me make my decision because I'm still just kind of on the fence. I'm like, you know what? I asked people on the podcast and I haven't gotten any results yet because obviously it, I only asked last night. Um, but I want to gather some information from you guys. Leave in the comments section. I care and if I would. Okay. Ice Queen says do it. Okay. She says I would. Perfect. 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 Email sent. Perfect. It would be cool. Thank you, Tommy. If we can make them when ordered, but to load up on sizes not going. No, this would be a, a this would be a you order the shirt in your size and it gets made as you order it it would not be something stocked in a warehouse it would be something like the order would come in they'd make the shirt and ship it to your house or make the hat and ship it to your house <laughs> yeah i know it is isn't it? i'm like man it is badass i i don't know man i'm in a whole different world now oh i got eg's uh email Hey, brother, want to work with you to purchase an RV. I'm only two hours away from you. Okay, brother, we'll work on it. I got your phone number. I'll give you a call tomorrow, okay? EG, I'll give you a call tomorrow, okay? It'll either be tomorrow or Monday, depending on what I end up having to do tomorrow. Gym wearable shirts, shorts, I would. Okay, shorts, all right. Uh, you know. As long as you're making some money on it, HP shirts and hats be great. It would be something I make money on. It's not something um, I, I would definitely make money on it. Um, they, I, I got my first really official brand deal. I mean, a lot of you've probably seen the Alloy Man stuff they send me. Alloy Man, I'm gonna tell you that is the weirdest thing that ever happened. Those guys shipped me so many power tools, and. I mean, they, they, they sent me a whole toolkit thing and they only asked me for two videos and I made like seven for them because it's like, they got me all these power tools and they sent me 50 bucks and I'm like, that's good enough for me to put you in a few of my videos, man. I'm good with that, you know? I mean, and they're pretty good power tools. I'm very shocked. I mean, they're made in China and they're an actual Chinese company. They're not a company in the US. They're a Chinese company. I don't think they'll ever do well here in the US. But to get something free was really cool. But I got actually a, my first official brand deal with Nomad. Nomad is an internet company, kind of like Starlink. So uh, I was very excited about that. I'm getting shipped their stuff. Hola, Tokyo Hotel fan. Hello, hello, everybody. You're welcome. Do you believe in Jesus? Of course, he can help you. I'm the Trump of the RVs. <laughs> I, I don't know whether to take that as a compliment or not. I'm not, I'm not the biggest. It, it, politically, guys, if you want to know one thing politically about me, I am not a fan of either one of them. I'm not a fan of Joe Biden, and I'm sure not a fan of Trump either. I'm not a fan of either one of them. But it is what it is. Uh, do you know who Tom Collitz is or Bill Collitz? Name sounds familiar, but I'm not sure. Uh, old people yuck. Okay. Let me get rid of Tornado here and hide them from the channel. Tommy's laughing. Yep. But that's the truth, man. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not big into politics. I mean, I talk a little bit about community and stuff on the podcast, but I, I just, I'm not a Republican and I'm not a Democrat. And I think sometimes it pisses people off. But I think I know what you meant. Like, I just tell it how it is, right? Like, I'm just going to tell you exactly how it is. I mean, I, I think that's why sometimes some of these dealerships that have product I'd like to film are like, oh, hell no, don't come over here. You come over here, we're going to start having manufacturer's calls pissed. My boss seems to not care. No, it's, I don't know yet. We haven't designed it yet, H2 Fowler 2012. I mean, that sounds like a good idea, but we haven't, um, we don't have, um, we, I haven't designed it yet, but it was just something the guy wanted to talk about. 
Singer and Tom plays guitar. Oh, okay, that's cool. That's true. Uh, Yell Giat. What the heck? Okay. I need oil. Okay. Uh, let's get rid of United States. Uh, what else we got? I'm deaf. Can you shout me out? <laughs> that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good line. Hold on. We need another swig of adult beverage, and I don't want to get on camera here because then YouTube will kill me. Hmm. There are some things YouTube just doesn't put up with. They put up with a lot of crap I do. In fact, what's funny, so I'm going to tell you guys something, and I'm going to end it on this note, okay? And this is going to be ballsy of me to say, but um, I got a notification from YouTube saying that they had a handful of, well, their words were not a handful, but I could only guess a handful of people that were saying that I was bullying people with my videos on my main channel, on this channel. That I was bullying people. Um, very interesting. So, they removed uh, two of my videos. Not removed completely, just kind of like unlisted two of my videos. And both videos had to do with Grand Design Fifth Wheels. I wonder who had that done. They're reactivated. Uh, YouTube uh, emailed me uh, later this afternoon and told me they already investigated and they actually reactivated and republicized the videos. Um, but very interesting. You're so funny. I try to be funny. It's not, not really a thing. My first time here, what do you do, my brother? I am in the RV business, uh, Big Israel, so I give people transparent information about the RV business. I kind of tell people how it is. That sounded fun. Hell yeah, that was fun. Have you ever heard the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Yes! Star Wars! Street Raw 1, 2, 3. Yes! Yes! Trey Basketball, you're fun. Those were the people that got trophies anyway. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Jesus loves you, dude. Thank you, Reagan Frank. Uh, that's obviously bullying. Yeah, no, it's crazy. I was sitting there straight out going, are you serious? But YouTube responded quick, man. They... Whoever was looking at it was looking at the two videos. They looked at them quickly. This was not something that dragged on like a lot of people claim that YouTube does. Um, that YouTube automatically cancels you and automatically does this. I mean, there's just so much fake information out, about there, out there about how YouTube actually operates. And uh, they were quick, man. They, they, I mean, I saw the videos unlisted. And then five hours later, they were public again. And they, they sent me an email. It was really, really cool. Uh, yeah, it's not bullying. It's just, I think, some, there's rumors. And it's solely rumors. There are rumors amongst the factory side of the business and some of the dealerships out there that are saying that Grand Design hired a team of people that their job is to hunt down negative information about construction or frame or electrical issues on the fifth wheel and have those things removed. That's a rumor. I can't verify that. I don't think I'll ever be able to verify that. Couldn't tell you if that's true or not. But very interesting that somebody was trying to cancel two of my videos and they just happened to talk about Grand Design fifth wheels and frame flex. Kind of coincidental, wouldn't you say? Can you say you UWU for five thousand bucks? Okay. We all felt no bull. They just don't like the truth. I don't think it's they don't like the truth. I think they don't want to face it. I think they don't like bad publicity. Now, if you look at how Brinkley is operating, and I don't know this for a fact, but it, the and it's not a bad thing. This is not talking crap about Brinkley, okay? But if if you looked at dealerships across the U.S. Don't want me to come to their dealership to film a Brinkley. Tells me that Brinkley wants to uh, control its own narrative. Now remember, the Brinkley guy, the Brinkley guys were the old Grand Design founders. So you know, I, I believe that's kind of interconnected. That whole thing about social media and controlling the narrative. 
That's really interesting and could be true. Absolutely. Hi, Maddie. Mentally sending positive brainwaves your way to your RN little fella. Okay, thank you. The Wandering Croc. Uh, Larry says, right. Jeffy, play Want to See My Pencil by Jeffy. Okay, that's going bye-bye. Hide -bye. user. Frameflex, LOL. Agreed, it's Amea. How you doing, it's Amea? It, it's -a me, Mario, today. That's my that's my joke of the day, okay? Uh, last thing, I really... Uh, last, 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 last thing, okay? And then I gotta get going. Okay. Um, I was told today... Okay, I was told today that apparently two YouTubers have beef with me. I won't tell you who they are because I think it's kind of funny that somebody has beef with me because they think I'm saying things negative about them. And one particular YouTuber in general wanted me to divulge who my sources were where I get my information and kind of sent out a thing like I think you're full of crap and I think that your sources are full of crap and I want to know who they are I'm like huh well first of all I have no beef with any other RV YouTuber don't care to and I'm pretty sure you guys know Especially if you're watching this afterward. I'm pretty sure you guys know that any YouTuber that has beef with me that's in the RV space probably is going to lose that fight. <laughs> because I got nothing to lose and I don't give a you know what. Because that's why they call me the honey badger. They can't help they resemble your remarks. Yeah, they're in the camera say. <laughs> have a great upcoming season in sales. Hey, thank you so much, Theo. You have a good one, brother. Um anyway, I thought it was hilarious. Um <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Anyway, same bat time, same bat channel. Um, I'm gonna have a couple announcements in the middle of the week once I know dates. I know that I will be going out Monday, hopefully, to California. Uh, there's an owner of a Brinkley that says I can come out. Hopefully, they respond to my email before Monday because i got to head out there anyway. Uh, they don't need to know your source. I tell them to prove me wrong. Actually, I had different words on my podcast for them. Um, something I can't say on the live stream. But if you want to check out the podcast, the last episode, uh, yeah, I kind of told them how I felt. <laughs> And a shout out to Mark Wahlberg. I want to interview Mark Wahlberg on my podcast. I did not know the guy owned an RV dealership, and I love it. Um, and I want to interview him about it. And I don't think I'll ever be able to, but shit, anybody that knows the guy, shout out to him and let him know the Honey Badger wants to do it. You guys have a great night. Have a great week. We'll see you next Saturday.